Welcome to PGCast, a production of HashRocket. My name is Jack Christensen. In today's episode, we will examine range types and how they can simplify queries and improve data integrity. A range type represents a range of values. For example, 1 through 5, or January 10th through January 12th. In a database without range types, it is necessary to represent a range as two columns, such as start date and end date. While this can work, it also can be difficult to work with. PostgreSQL range types simplify this dramatically. Let's look at some of the features we get with ranges. First, let's use a range constructor function to build a range. To find if a value is included in a range, use the inclusion operator, also known as the ice cream cone. Three is included, six is not. We can also check if ranges overlap. The overlap operator is the double ampersand. These do overlap, these don't. But what about the bounds of a range? Are they inclusive or exclusive? The lower end, they're inclusive. At the upper end, they're exclusive. This can be changed by passing a third argument to the range constructor. This argument is a two-character string with the first character standing for the lower bound type and the second character standing for the upper bound type. Square brackets mean inclusive and parentheses mean exclusive. The default of inclusive lower and exclusive upper bounds is typically what you want. This works nicely when testing for overlaps as it lets ranges just touch without actually overlapping. Notice there's no overlap detected there. Ranges can also be made unbounded by using null as one of the edges. Using a range instead of two separate columns also provides additional data integrity because it prevents ranges where the lower and upper boundaries are reversed. In addition, Postgres supports constraints that can prevent overlapping ranges from being stored. Suppose we're building a database to handle hotel reservations. A simple reservations table would have a primary key, the room, and the date range. So I'll add the primary key. Room should actually be a var car. Kind of like a phone number type thing, even though you may think of it as a number, it's not really a number. And we'll have dates, we'll use date range. Uh, Postgres defines several different range types, and uh, you can define your own as well. And this line is the most interesting part. Now here's how to read this exclusion constraint. The first word exclude means exclude any row from matching any other row. Using gist means that the underlying index type is gist, which stands for generalized search tree. The expressions in the parentheses are the match conditions. First, check the room column with the equality operator. Then check for dates with the overlap operator. Nuts. Postgres is giving us an error. So what's the problem here? Problem is the gist index type does not support equality on varcar by default. We actually need to install an extension to get this behavior. Btree gist gives us the operator we want and uh, several more in addition. 
Now when we create this table, it'll work. So let's try out inserting some rows. First, let's insert a row for room 101. And for the date, we will say uh, November, 11, November 1st through November 10th, say. So we inserted a row, all is good. Um, let's try inserting a row with overlapping dates, but for a different room. Say room 201. And we'll say from the 5th to the 15th. Ah, worked fine, as it should. But if we try and insert an overlapping row for the same room, Postgres will stop it. As a bonus, not only does the exclusion constraint improve data integrity, the underlying index also can dramatically improve performance when searching with the overlap operator. Thanks for watching.